Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and this is going to be a quick review on classifying and grouping living things. Um, and this is primarily going to be a review of concepts from ninth grade, but there might be a couple new things in there. Maybe you'll learn something new. If not, it's been a long time since ninth grade. Next thing I want to talk about is how we group different species together when we're talking about them. So this is like big categorizations of groups of organisms, so not just species. I mean, species is actually one of the big categorizations. So what we do is we group them into kingdoms, phylums, classes, orders, families, genuses, and species. So you're probably familiar with those. And you should be familiar with this other one, which is a domain. So um, we categorize these. These are the largest. A domain is the largest grouping of organisms down to a species, which is the most specific grouping of organisms. And we define a species, um, a good species, as organisms that um, in nature are capable of reproducing um, and creating viable fertile offspring, which means offspring that are capable of surviving and producing new offspring. Um, and so if you think about uh, like a mule, and um, a mule is not actually fertile, so we don't consider that its own species. So um, we go from domain, which is the largest, all the way down to species, and there are a couple different ways you can, you can remember this. I always remember it as dumb kids playing chase on freeways get smushed. That's how I remember it. Um, but you probably learned um, King Philip came over for great spaghetti, um, so daring King Philip came over for great spaghetti. That's one way to remember it. Um, we mainly focus on the domain and the kingdom, so really as long as you know the domain and the kingdom and the genus and the species, I'm, I'm pretty much a happy teacher. So we're going to focus a lot on domain and kingdom. Um, we will talk about genus and species when we, when we talk about um, uh, cladograms, and we'll talk a little bit about family and order, but we don't we don't focus a ton on phylum and, and class anymore. Um, so that's our big categories. After that, um, we need to look at the different kingdoms. So I'm going to bet that you know most of the kingdoms already. So we have plants, plantae, animals, animalia, fungi, fungi, um, protus, protista, and then we have these other two kingdoms, archaebacteria and eubacteria. And archaebacteria is one type of bacteria, and eubacteria is a different type of bacteria. So we divide those six kingdoms up into different domains, and there are only three domains. Um, and these four, plants, animals, fungi, and protists, are all in the domain eukarya. And then the other two, archaebacteria, and eubacteria actually have their own domains. So archae is the domain which contains archaebacteria, and bacteria is the domain that, can, that contains eubacteria. Now, ninth grade, think back. You remember there were bacteria that you heard about all the time, things like E. coli and salmonella that affect you? Those are the eubacteria. And then those bacteria that they talked about being extremophiles, things that lived um, in very salty areas, uh, lived off of heavy metals, lived in volcanoes and hot springs. Those are the archaebacteria, and we're going to be talking a lot about the three different domains. Um, what we do need to talk about is what's the difference between a prokaryote and a eukaryote. Well, a eukaryote is something that comes from plants, animals, fungi, or protista. And the primary difference between um, eukaryotes and prokaryotes is, who remembers, it's that eukaryotes actually contain, their, nu their cells contain nuclei, um, and they have membrane-bound organelles, whereas the bacteria, the prokaryotes, either type, they don't contain any nucleated cells. They're single-celled, and they're not nucleated cells. So that's the difference. Um, while we're here, I want you guys to know that uh, protus, we actually think protus should actually be classified as a bunch of different kingdoms now. Um, and archaebacteria and eubacteria in some books actually um, are, have been split into many kingdoms. So now if you actually look at very modern classifications, protus has been broken all sorts of up. Like there's single cell organisms that are kind of like fungus, kind of like animals, kind of like plants. And then there's many different kingdoms within archae and and bacteria, but this this is this is good for you for this year. 
Um, so protists, there's many kingdoms, but we, we're not we're not 100% sold on that. So those are the eukaryotes. Those are the prokaryotes. Going back to what I was saying earlier, and some quick little drawings. That's an animal cell. Don't mock. That's a plant cell. See the chloroplast. I'm not drawing a fungal cell because um, we're not going to talk about what makes it different. That's a protist. It's a paramecium without the contractile vacuole. Um, and then prokaryotes. That should be much, much smaller, but if I draw it much, much smaller, you won't be able to see it. Now notice there's no white membrane browned nucleus in the prokaryotes. There's just the blue DNA. Blue is the DNA in all of those. So that's the difference. Um, now the last thing we're going to talk about is binomial nomenclature. Binomial, binomial, two words, bi. Nomial means two names, nomenclature. So it's a two-name naming system, um, and you're pretty familiar with this binomial nomenclature system. Homo sapiens, that's us. The genus name is Homo, and the species name is sapiens. Now, if you notice, I wrote it in a very slanty handwriting. That's because it's supposed to be italicized. So anytime you actually are typing a... Um, a species name, it should be italicized. If you're handwriting it, you should technically underline it. Now, I also want you to notice that the uh, genus name, the, the homo, is capitalized, but the sapiens is not capitalized. So we only capitalize the genus name. We do not capitalize the species name. And it's always the genus and then the species. Um, and we refer to most species by their binomial nomenclature name, which is, for us, homo sapiens. Um, and we're going to talk about a lot of different organisms this year. So like Escherichia coli, E. coli, that's, that's a bacteria. Um, so we abbreviate a lot of them, like Salmonella, we just call Salmonella. Um, but, and Staphylococcus is actually a huge genus of different bacteria. So if you have a staph infection, you have some type of Staphylococcus bacteria. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to be specific when we can. That's it. I hope that was helpful and hopefully you're ready to hit the ground running on some ecology.